All right, guys, in today's video, we have some exciting PlayStation 5 news to go over and discuss. Recently, PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan did an extensive interview where he talked about the PlayStation 5, and he seems to have revealed a lot of very interesting things. He talks about generational defining exclusives and how he doesn't believe that any games that have been revealed so far can necessarily be counted as generational defining, which is kind of crazy considering we're talking about games like God of War, Ragnarok, and Horizon Forbidden West. But the reason why this is exciting is because he's clearly hinting that Sony has a lot more going on behind the scenes than we are currently aware of. So it's very exciting. He also talks about the Bethesda acquisition and whether or not these games are going to be coming to PlayStation 5. He talks about a potential Game Pass competitor, which is very interesting, and how there will be news coming from Sony soon about that. So again, we have a lot to go over and cover here. If you could do me a favor, hit the like button to show your support and help the video out. Hit the subscribe button if you're new and hit the bell notification icon as well. But starting with this first quote from Jim Ryan, he talks about generational defining games and when we can expect to see those games that are really taking full advantage of the PlayStation 5 hardware. He says, history will tell you that it's in the second or third year that the developers really hit their stride. Developers typically need a little bit of time to familiarize themselves with the hardware, but it's probably 2022 that you're going to see some wonderful things in the same way that it was 2015 or 2016 for the previous generation, when the generation defining games started to be published. So this quote is very interesting to me because it's pretty clear cut. He's not necessarily saying that, oh, we have a bunch of games in development that we haven't announced yet. He doesn't need to say that. We already know that's the case. But it's just crazy to think that when he makes this statement, he says 2022, what games are going to be coming out before that, right? We're already seeing amazing things with games like Demon's Souls and Spider-Man. But when you specifically look at games like God of War Ragnarok and Horizon Forbidden West, assuming they don't get delayed, He's not counting those games as the generation defining games that we can expect to see possibly coming out in 2022. Now, look, there are a lot of signs that Sony has a ton of games in development behind the scenes that they have yet to reveal. In fact, I've heard that apparently Sony was kind of saving a few things for uh you know, this year in particular when it comes to game reveals because they were unsure if Microsoft had some kind of secret exclusive they were saving, but we know that that's not the case. Um, Sony was anticipating having to go, go up against another Halo game and possibly a secret Microsoft exclusive. So with that in mind, there were games that Sony was prepared to reveal if they needed to, but they actually chose not to. And apparently God of War Ragnarok is not one of those games. Let that sink in. Yeah, there's going to be some crazy things going on when it comes to PlayStation 5 games in the next year or two. So uh, moving right along from that, I want to talk about um, Jim Ryan's comments on the Elder Scrolls 6 and Starfield and whether or not they're going to be on PlayStation 5. And, uh, you know, according to Jim Ryan, even he doesn't know. So this is very interesting. Um, so this is coming from the Russian interview with a, new, a Russian news agency, the same interview. And he was asked about how he felt about the acquisition of Bethesda and whether PS5 players might not get to play the Elder Scrolls 6 or Starfield. And he says, that's a, de a decision that is out of our hands. We'll wait and see what happens. I look forward to learning about that. We just take a different approach. Our emphasis has been to focus on really steady, slow, but constant organic growth of our studios, selectively bolstered by acquisitions. We respect the steps taken by our competition. They seem logical and sensible, but we're equally happy, happy and confident we've got a better launch lineup than we've ever had at any of our console launches. And so he's not revealing anything insane here, right? Like nothing mind blowing. But what he does reveal is that apparently even Sony doesn't know what's going to happen with these games. So, you know, it just goes to show that this is something that is still very much up in the air and it will be interesting to see what Microsoft decides to do. Um, Jim Ryan also talked a little bit about PlayStation 5 sales. I'm sure many of you are well aware of just how real the struggle is right now for people who are 
you know, wanting to get their hands on the PS5, how difficult it is for them. It's kind of ridiculous, actually. And, you know, seeing scalpers and stuff like that just makes the situation 10 times worse. But, um, you know, this is what Jim Ryan had to say when he talks about, uh, you know, the, the stock of the PlayStation 5. He says absolutely everything has been sold. So while there has been a trickle of PS5 stock returning to the retail channel this week, it's gone in minutes and the executive has revealed that after spending much of the year ensuring there's demand for the machine, now he's focused on getting enough devices in the market to meet that demand. Everything is sold. Absolutely everything is sold, he said. I've spent much of the last year trying to be sure that we can generate enough demand for this product. And now in terms of my executive bandwidth, I'm spending a lot more time on trying to increase supply to meet that demand. So while it's nothing too revealing, it just goes to show that, uh, you know, Sony was a little bit, I don't want to say nervous. I don't think that that's the right word to use, but they were clearly very mindful of making sure that they did not get complacent and just assume that the demand was going to be there for the PS5. And they could have done that. They could have just kind of sat back and said, well, we know PS5 demand is going to be there. For the first six months or the first year so we don't really need to do much but instead they focused on the games they focused on the launch lineup and now the only problem they seem to have is they just can't get enough units out there quick enough so it's hard to say how long that's going to remain a problem but according to jim ryan everything has been sold now moving on from that we're talking about sony's response to game pass and uh, this is a very interesting comment so that again this is coming from the same interview from the Russian news agency, uh, Ryan was specifically asked how Sony will respond to Game Pass, to which he said there is actually news to come, but just not today. We have PlayStation Now, which is our subscription service, and that is available in a number of markets. Back in September, Jim Ryan said that a subscription model akin to Game Pass isn't sustainable and suggested that Sony has no plans to go down that route. Speaking to Games Industry, Ryan explained that games are very expensive to develop and it doesn't make sense to offer them as part of a subscription service. He added that such a model might work for other companies, but it doesn't align with Sony's vision. So I'm not going to reiterate that quote, but that's the gist of it is, you know, a couple of months ago, Jim Ryan uh, made it clear that, you know, following that Game Pass model, at least specifically the way Microsoft does it, isn't going to work for Sony. So that's why I find these comments so interesting is because he straight up says that there is news to come from PlayStation when it comes to a Game Pass competitor of some sort. And so I guess this kind of leads right into the next thing that they talked about, which is the PlayStation Plus collection. As of right now, a lot of people are looking at the PlayStation Plus collection and kind of looking at that as what could potentially be a Game Pass competitor, competitor in the long run because of what's on offer. And so Sony apparently hasn't really decided whether or not they plan to expand the PlayStation Plus collection. Now, maybe this is what Jim Ryan's alluding to. Maybe not, though. The fact that he does apparently say that they don't know if they're going to expand it. Maybe what he's talking about in terms of a Game Pass competitor is something completely separate from this. He does reference PlayStation now, so maybe that's what he's talking about. But he was asked if there are any plans to grow the collection, which currently consists of 10 first party games and 10 third party games. And he said, well, we're going to wait and see how the world receives the PlayStation Plus collection. You know which games are played and how much they're played before we make any decisions about that. We think it's potentially going to be a great user acquisition tool. Arguably, if you never had a PS4 and you choose to buy a PS5, you basically get a PS4, right? So he's, you know, just kind of making it obvious that right now it's all about just getting people in to the PlayStation 5 and that there's you know, going to be a certain demographic of people who do buy a PS5 who just completely missed out on the PS4. And the PlayStation Plus collection is just a huge incentive for them to subscribe to PlayStation Plus, regardless of whether or not they plan to play games online. So that way they can get access to all of those games, at least the first party games that they may have missed out on. Now to end this video, I wanna go over Jim Ryan's comments on the console wars and competition. So it says here, Sony boss Jim Ryan has weighed in on the latest console war between the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series consoles, stating that he doesn't like the term and that it's great that there's competition. And this is once again coming from the same interview. 
Console wars is not a term I ever use or actually like. For me, it's great that there's competition. I think it makes us work harder and avoids us getting complacent. It's great that the consumer has a choice. I think that's wonderful. We're happy and we're proud with what we have. So it's a pretty, you know, clear cut, simple response. He's just saying that, look, you know, from his position, they don't look at it as a war per se. And why would they? I mean, these are business executives. His job is to grow the PlayStation brand and help it succeed. It's not about taking down another company, but he does mention the competitive aspect, which I'm glad he did because what he said is hitting the nail on the head. Competition is good, so that way they can avoid complacency because the truth of the matter is if there is no competition, then complacency is right around the corner for any company in any market. So that's why even though I'm really hard on Xbox and people think that I want to see Xbox go down in flames for some reason, that's not the case at all. I want to see Xbox compete in the best possible way they can. And to be honest, the direction that Xbox goes in uh, seemingly more and more each year, it it honestly creates less and less competition for Sony in some areas, not all areas. You can clearly see that Sony's thinking about Game Pass, but the competition I really want to see come from Microsoft comes in the games department, not necessarily the services or even the hardware per se. I'm glad that it's there, but I want to see it come in the form of games. So just wanted to kind of uh, finish this video off by letting you know what Jim Ryan had to say about the competition. But that does it for the video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Again, leave it a like to help it out. Subscribe if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share the video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.